In 2007, there was a global shift in attitude towards malaria when a movement was launched to eradicate the disease. Medicines for Malaria Venture have played a critical role in this crusade. So what progress has been made? MMV's role is to meet unmet medical needs in malaria by discovering new medicine. In the last five years, we've been successful in bringing four new medicines to market, one for children, one for severe malaria, and two new gold standard treatments. The challenges we face for, for malaria are considerable, looking at malaria eradication over the next few decades. So the first is that we need new medicines with simpler regimens, so going down from the current three days to, to one day. The second is to look for medicines which will overcome resistance. The third area is that most of our populations, most of our patients are actually extremely vulnerable. They're very small children, they're pregnant women. So we need drugs which are especially fine-tuned for those populations. Well, MMV's medicines are saving lives today, but we need to look beyond that. And ultimately, the medicines that we'll develop for the future are the medicines that are going to support the elimination and drugs that will ultimately prevent it, that can be used by pregnant women, children, to stop them from getting malaria. And only in this way are we going to drive the parasite away forever. Since their inception in 1999, Medicines for Malaria Venture have co-developed four new anti-malarial drugs with academic and industry partners and continue the hunt for next generation medicines. Why is there a need for further such treatments? We're seeing resistance to the existing class of drugs and so we need the next generation to be brought forward as quickly as possible. The second reason is our objectives and our objectives are now looking towards the elimination and eradication of malaria and for that we need an entirely different profile of drugs. They're the drugs that are being discovered and developed today at MMV. Malaria is an infectious disease so all the drugs we have are always at danger of being brought down by resistance and the more that we use them the more the danger of resistance comes up. So one thing we're very excited about is that we have new drugs now being tested in patients for the first time and new classes of drugs which will protect them from resistance for the first time in 30 years. The second issue we have in eradication is actually how to stop people infecting each other, so how to stop somebody infecting a mosquito that then infects another patient. The third big challenge, of course, is the famous Plasmodium vivax, which comes up a lot in Southeast Asia, in Asia itself, in South America, but increasingly in Africa. And that's a particularly nasty form that has a dormant form in your liver. So basically, you can have a malaria episode without being bitten. So you can imagine there we have to set up special screens to look for new classes of compounds. There are three vital components to the treatment of malaria. Availability, acceptability and proper use of medicines. How do Medicines for Malaria Venture incorporate these into their work? We work with international rule-setting bodies like the World Health Organization. We work with country-level partners that are actually rolling out the use of drugs and setting national rules and we make sure patients, doctors, and nurses understand the correct use of the drugs. Our ultimate hope is that there be an expansion of access. And that means that in the private sector in these countries, as well as the public sector, we focus on the price being affordable, the supply chain making sure the drugs are there when people need it, and that forward-looking forecast of drug need is done rationally to make sure countries don't run out of necessary drugs. The T3 initiative, Test, Treat, Track, helps ensure only confirmed cases of malaria are treated. The point of T3 is acknowledging that every patient who comes through the door of a health center with a fever may in fact not have malaria. So to treat the patient correctly, you have to diagnose before giving them an artemisinin and combination therapy drug. It's also important that you not waste an ACT on a patient who's not sick with malaria. And lastly, it's important for the patient to go home with the correct diagnosis and treatment. Well, the key thing that needs to happen to defeat malaria is partnership. And it goes right from the discovery and the development of new drugs through to rolling them out into communities in collaboration with the public health community and then monitoring our progress to ensure that we're having the impact we believe, we're giving patients the best possible interventions and that ultimately we can drive all the way to eradication of the parasite altogether.